This is going to be pretty exciting. I got my hands on a DJI Spark for the weekend. Imagine a selfie drone you can control only by the use of your hands. In this review, we're going to test the DJI Spark and see if it can live up to the hype. Welcome to Drones and Electric Unicycles, where we make weekly tutorials, tips and reviews to help you get the best out of your equipment. Consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the latest from us. So what is DJI Spark? This is the entry-level drone from DJI. It has a pretty compact design. It has foldable propellers like we know from the Big Brother Mavic Pro. It packs a 12 megapixel camera with a f2.6 aperture lens that is stabilized with a two-axis gimbal. It records full HD 1080p 30 frames per second and that should be more than enough for any YouTube production. DJI Spark comes in five different colors. It has a removable battery with a flight time of 16 minutes that easily pops in and out. If you have the Fly More Combo package, it comes with a multi-charger that allows you to charge three batteries at the same time, so you have to pick up an extra as two is standard. You can charge the batteries uh, if you buy a dedicated car charger, so you never run out of juice on the go. Spark has obstacle 3D avoidance sensors in the front. It has downward sensors for stabilizing hovering. The front-facing sensor should be upgraded to do an even better job than Mavic. You can fly the DJI Spark with a remote, your phone, or with the new exciting hand gestures. The range can be extended up to two miles with the remote. With the Wi-Fi connection of your phone, you have to settle for less than 80 meters horizontal and 50 meters in the height. You can fly FPV with the DJI Spark as it also works with the DJI goggles. It's around three to four months since DJI Spark was announced. I have been discussing with myself for equal amount of time if I should get one or not. But now I've got a chance to borrow one, so what better way to find out than put it to the test. This review has been brought to you in collaborations with Droner Deco that kindly has made this drone available for me to test. If you don't know Droner Deco, they are a pretty cool company that offers a full range of DJI products and pilot educations for both private and businesses. You should definitely look them up at Droner Deco. I've been a Mavic Pro owner for the last nine months, as you probably know. This drone packs an impressive set of specs compared to the DJI Spark, but it's also twice the price. For me, it's not interesting to buy DJI Spark as a replacement. But as a compact point and shoot camera, I can bring along for those unexpected moments when we are riding electric unicycles. Size-wise, DJI Spark seems on the surface to be pretty small, but because the arms don't fold, it actually takes up quite some space. If you throw in the controller and some extra batteries, it almost takes the same space as the Mavic when folded. So this is not the reason for picking the Spark over Mavic. But launching the Spark from the palm of your hand and be ready to shoot within seconds get me really pumped. The new hand gestures seem so cool and I can't wait to get a chance to try them out. So let's go out and find out how well they work. Before we test, let me ask you a question. What do you think about the DJI Spark and what features are you missing to make this the perfect selfie drone? Voice your opinion below with your fellow flyers from the Drones and Electric Unicycle community. Often the best advice is found among your comments, so don't be shy. Let's try out hand gesture mode. Let's try the hand launch sequence. First, you power up the spark. One short press and one long one. And wait for the DJI sound. Double tap the power button. And wait for the spark to recognize your face. Lift. Go left. Go right. Go down. Go up, circle round, wave one hand back up to selfie position. Take picture. Wave two hands, return to home. Prepare to land. One thing that's really annoying is there's no gesture for starting video recording. There is a workaround that I want to show you, but it makes the whole solution less elegant. 
you need to connect your smartphone, start video recording, and then hand launch the drone. Video keeps recording while using the hand gestures. But why DJI? This ruins the whole experience by getting the machine fast in the air and using the hand gestures. In general, the gestures feel unreliable and far from what you see in the commercials. They seem more like a gimmick than a tool right now. But who knows, that might change in the future. Now we have the smartphone going. We can go through the intelligent flight modes that will take your experience even further. There are four modes available and you can activate them through the DJI GO app. This of course requires a little more planning compared to the hand gestures. These are the modes available. Rocket. Ascent with the camera pointing downward. Drone fly. Backward and upward with the camera locked on your subject. Circle. Circle around your target. Helix. Fly upward while circling around your subject. These options are the intelligent flight modes called QuickShot. You have two additional options through the app and those are Tap Fly, where it flies in the direction where you tap on the screen while sensing obstacles. With Active Track you can select between Trace and Profile. Trace. Track your target in the front or behind or even circle around it. Profile. Follow your subject from a fixed perspective. You can do a lot of stuff with your smartphone. You have all the usual cool stuff we know from DJI with auto takeoff and return to home. As well as battery status, flight mode, number of satellites and of course your camera feed. So no complaints here. If you want to fly like the Mavic, you need the remote. This looks more or less like the Mavic remote but without the built-in LCD screen. Using the remote only makes sense to me if you want to pack light or don't want to spend the money on both drones. Everything Spark does, Mavic do better, as it should be at twice the price. Let's look at some footage recorded by Spark, recorded in 1080p, 30 frames per second. As you can see, Spark is doing a remarkable job and the result will be satisfying to most. So what do I think about the DJI Spark? It's an amazing little machine and a near perfect match for somebody just entering the hobby. The lagging support for video and gesture mode is a potential deal breaker for me. The same goes with the unliable response to hand gestures. I did experience problems with poor radio channel quality and lost connection to the Spark at one point. So be careful when using Wi-Fi. Coming from Mavic Pro, the flight times feel very short. Low battery warning. But I guess that can be compensated by adding a few more batteries. I love the idea of just having a drone in my pocket I can launch within seconds when I need it. Our testing unfortunately shows that this is not the case right now. DJI definitely spotted a need here. It would not substitute my Mavic, but it would be a nice supplement. So right now, this is a big thumbs up from me. Thank you, and if you like this DJI Spark review, make sure to smack the like button below. Don't hold back on the comments what you think about the DJI Spark. Have a nice day, and see you in the next one.